in uh, September 2013, I had a motorcycle accident and um, I had a multi-fragmental tibial plateau fracture, um, which was plated and screwed um, to fix the break, but uh, left me with a, a bad slope in my, my tibia. My leg was unusable, really. I couldn't walk on it. It was, it was complete agony. Uh, so I had the accident in Belgium, and that's where they, they fixed it. Um, and I was in hospital five weeks. And then I came back to the UK and sort of referred to a, a surgeon here just for follow-up um, after the accident. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt things weren't right. Um, I was pushing really hard with my physio, but, you know, it was just, it was unbearable. And I had no stability in my knee. Um, so I pushed him to, you know, ha investigate and see, see what was wrong. I think the instability told me things were not right. Um, the pain I accepted would probably be part of the process of healing because um, it was a, a bad break. Um, but yeah, I certainly manoeuvring my, my leg, I, I felt things weren't right. In terms of stability, you can keep pushing with your phys physio and try and make the leg and the knee stronger by building the muscle and take the screws out because it's you know a less sort of aggressive route to go down um, or you know we refer you on to someone else and, and see about changing things in your knee so um, I decided let's have a look and take the screws out um, you know, because there's less risk and um, after that operation he said those screws coming out aren't going to help anything you're your knee when when I was under it just the hyperextension was so big he said you'll never be able to walk on that knee um, but he said the work to correct the, the corrective surgery is is out of my depth so uh, he referred me to Mr Wilson um, so after I had the break um, I was non weight bearing for sort of two to three months and on crutches or? Uh, yeah on crutches and in a leg brace and um, as I say I was you know pushing with my physio I'm quite an active person so the physio I went at it 110 percent I was really determined with it um, so I was, I was trying more and more to get off the crutches uh, but it just wasn't happening and in fact it was the pain levels were getting worse and I ended up just being able to maneuver on crutches around the house and at work um, and I had to get a wheelchair for out and about um, because I, I couldn't end up not being able to walk on my leg even one metre um, because it was just unbearable. Uh, constant pain, yeah. And I, the only thing that would take the edge off was morphine patches. Um, and so it was, it was a very high, high intense you know, level of pain, you know. It was everything. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk um, on my leg at all, and I was just in, in complete ag agony. Yeah, um, so obviously it was quite a big operation, and um, I wanted to get some other opinions and see if, if I was going down the right course with Mr Wilson or if there was um, other ways to go about it. So um, the other opinions I got were were similar. I went to France to see a doctor there and another surgeon in the UK. Um, and the, the the surgeon in the UK, um, well, they both wanted to do the metalwork removal and then do the, the slope change in osteotomy um, in separate procedures. And in France, he was willing to do it all in one go. And as much as I wanted it to all be over with, I thought I'd err on the side of caution and go the slower route, even though I'd be obviously in pain no longer. But um, it's a big operation, so I wanted to be cautious and make sure I was making the right de decision. Well, I wanted to be up and running again, doing all my sports and you know, back to normal, really, um, because well, that's in my head. I was 26 at the time. You know, that's all you want, is just to be back to normal and have your life back. It was quite hard um, because I honestly didn't, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I thought it'd take a miracle for my knee to be functioning again um, because, you know, the, the level of pain and, you know, um, 
well, disability that it had left me with um, was so severe. You know, it was really hard to imagine being normal again. So I had this internal battle with telling myself it's going to be fine. You know, we'll get there. And the other side of my, you know, conscious telling me you've got to be realistic. You know, look at yourself. You you can't walk. So yeah, it's 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 unrealistic. You know, to expect to expect very much, to be honest. So I had this internal battle, really, I, of yeah. trying to be positive, but, yeah, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> no, I spoke a lot, I guess, with my partner. Um, the actual procedure and having the surgery, to me, wasn't an option. I, it had to be done. I had to, you know, I had nothing to lose. So, um, but it was more a case of, who, who I thought was going to be the best route and looking at Mr Wilson's CV, I think, you know, I was quite impressed by what he was doing and, and thought that I'd probably be in the best hands with him. So um, it was more about, yeah, who was going to do the work. But, you know, in case of, in the case of actually having it done, it was, there was no question, you know, in my head, I just thought, you know, I, I prefer that my leg wasn't, I didn't have my leg, but rather than be in the pain that I was in and the immobility that I had. So, yeah, it was it wasn't a it wasn't a question. The other risks were were so minimal, really, for for my quality of life. I'm really happy. Um, it took quite a long time for you know things to start getting better because I've been immobile for uh, you know, over a year, and so I had massive muscle loss. Um, um, so I, I've had to really learn how to walk again. Um, it's not like I was using my leg before, so I, I had, I've had a massive learning curve really to, to use my leg again. So it's been quite slow, um, but I say in the last two to three months, um, <clears throat> I stopped using the walking stick completely. Um, I started cycling, you know, bit like big distances, and in the last month, I've started jumping running only like 20 meters or so but it's a start um i'm rock climbing um so i'm you know i, I exercise class so i'm really i'm really quite active now maybe six to eight weeks after it was getting more more comfortable certainly initially yeah, it was pretty agonising probably for the first week, but I had a massive slope change and it was 20 millimetres, so it was a big operation, uh, so it's to be expected. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, it's one of those things, I think, where it goes up and down a little bit, so you have good days and you have bad days. But um, And in terms of my, my leg, um, I felt quite quickly, probably after a month or so, I could feel the difference in the stability. Um, for example, you know, I'd always sit with my leg elevated and I'd need to prop my knee up with a pillow all the time because my knee just dropped backwards the wrong way. And I felt, you know, quite quickly afterwards, I didn't need to do that anymore because my knee was secure. So um, there were things like that that just, you know, I could see very quickly, you know, quite a big difference. Yeah. Uh, well, I was more determined than ever, really, when I first sort of met Mr Wilson I said do the best job that you can for me and I'll do you know I'll put the work in and I, I have you know I've started little and often doing something five times a day you can only do it in two or three repetitions it's not a lot and just slowly built it up and now I'm in the gym six days a week so um, I was you know seeing the physio on a weekly basis I was getting in the pool I was doing everything that I could to you know, put into my leg because the more you put in, the more, you know, you're going to get out of it and the stronger I can make it, the better it's going to be. So, um, yeah, I was very, very determined. And it was hard as well because you desperately want to achieve. Um, for a long time with my physio, I was so desperate to get in the gym class at the hospital and I, I kept pushing him, kept pushing him. And, um, you know, he kept saying, you're not ready yet, you're not ready, it's too intense. And you know, we did, we did a session for him, I think, just to satisfy me. And it left me 
in complete agony for about three days after because I kept going, I kept going. He said, how is it feeling? I said, I'm in absolute agony. He said, what do you think you should do? And I said, I'm going to push on. So it was, but I learned it's not always the best way to go about it. Um, and it was really hard because I, you know, I just desperately wanted the progression um, and, you know, just had to accept that it takes time. And, you know, I'm nearly a year down the line and I'm finally getting there, but it has taken probably 10 months to, to really get there. So it's, it's finding the right balance, but, you know, you need to give it your all, but you also need to listen to yourself and, and you know, be realistic, <laughs> as hard as that is sometimes. When, when I first met Mr. Wilson, he, he told me my, you know, a realistic expectation, he said, is to walk again, but he said, I can't guarantee you'll ever walk again pain free. So that's something that you need to you need to you know accept. And even after the surgery, that's what they kept telling me is that you know walking will always be painful for you. And when I initially met Mr. Wilson, it's not what I wanted to hear, and I was quite angry. And um, you know because when you're, you're active and you're young, you don't want to hear that the simple act of walking might still like be a challenge for you the rest of your life so um yeah it, it was it was difficult to to hear that and uh, as i say i was very you know i was quite angry about it i was i'd say um i always know and it's not quite right well nearly always um walking is probably still one of the things that is not always very comfortable, but saying that six weeks ago, I walked 17 kilometers in one day. So, you know, I d couldn't walk one meter this time last year. So it's, it's massive. Now I have no pain at night, no pain when I'm resting. Um, I'd, I'd say I probably have one bad day every three, three weeks, you know, and a bad day to me is, you know, I've just got to take it easy. Um, I say I'm, my normal day is I go to the gym for an hour, hour and a half, and then, you know, I have, leisure activities that go rock climbing or mountain biking or riding my motorbike so I've I'm you know I've got quite an intense you know I've, I'm quite I've got quite high demands of my my leg yeah. so um you know it's from worrying about walking you know there's so many other things that I can do mm. it, you know it's really a fantastic result and I'm, I'm over the moon and as I said before I couldn't I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel mm. and um you know, I, I'm well and truly at the end of the tunnel and it's shining very brightly. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs>
nice. I saw other testimonials from patients, um, but obviously not the same as, as what I had because mine was you know, quite complex and quite severe um, because it was, it was a huge opening and was quite a big change. So um, the other testimonials were quite positive and it, it was helpful to, to see what other people you know, could do before and after. Mr Wilson referred me to the website that you've set up with other yeah, um, patient testi testimonials mm -hmm. and um, how they actually carry out the procedure. And it's funny, you become quite a specialist when you've broken something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it, I found it, it really helpful and it gave me some hope that you know, it was the right thing to do and it, you know, really could improve things. Probably 85%, but I'm hoping you know, things are still improving. Um, so hopefully for the next six months to a year, I'll still see an increase and, you know, if, if I can get to 90, 95, that would be fantastic. But yeah, I'd say realistically 85%, but before I was 5%, so <laughs> it's a huge improvement, it really is.